whether it be, you know, ordinance changes, code changes, you know, just all those things. Um, I just want to say that. So, again, with all due respect, um, I appreciate you coming forward. I appreciate you coming to the mayor, him nominating you. Um, I just have a, a little reservation on someone being so new to be on that board. So, again, I just want to make sure I say that to you personally. So, again, thank you for being here, and thanks for your nomination. Yeah, I'd say that, and it makes sense, totally. I'd say with my role at Mercy and just how, how I've been developing, my goal, my job is basically to know the community really well. So I do a lot in the community with whether it's nonprofits, for-profit businesses, things like that. But I would agree. I mean, I know he Doug, our mayor, Hagedorn, mentioned the idea of homework. You now, that's definitely nothing new to me. But I definitely would want, if there's any reservation, to see how I could better understand the community. Thank you. You guys, I, that was the foremost thing that I considered when I thought of Rocco, okay? He is new. Yeah, there's gonna be a learning curve. There was a big learning curve when I was elected, as you guys well, all well know. And Rocco's intelligence, uh, and, and I didn't look at just his newness as being just a disadvantage. There's, there's advantage to having somebody else who has been around also who is new to town. He represents a segment of a population that we would like to attract to our town, you guys. That was my thinking. Please don't prove me wrong. Right. <laughs> no pressure. That. Right. <laughs> All the millennials, I got this. <laughs> See what I can do. Okay. Another question? I'm sure you'll do, Brian Rocco. Thank yeah. you. Perfect. Okay. I'll accept the motion, please. Make a motion. Motion by Holtmeyer. Second. Second by Wessels. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Okay. Uh, by your vote, Rocco, you're, new, you're on the PNC. Right on. Thanks, y'all. Okay. okay. Talk to you soon. <clears throat> Public hearings, rezoning 1322 East 5th Street. So I'm going to be doing my presentation from down here while I run the computer. <clears throat> All right. Our first request tonight is for a, a rezoning of 1322 East 5th Street. This is a property located on the um, southwest corner of 5th and Penn. You can see here this is a Google image of, of the home, uh, the previous home that was on there. It has been uh, vacant for quite some time, I believe. Um, this was taken um, a couple years ago. It's actually now boarded up. Um, the request, and here's an aerial of it so you can see the location. MacArthur Park is just to the west here. Uh, and then the vacant lot um, across the street uh, was zoned R3. That was part of the apartment, um, this, these apartments here on 5th and Penn. Uh, that was zoned for a third apartment building that was never built. As for the current zoning, you can see here this primarily of this section of 5th Street. Uh, is R1B, single family residential. Fifth Street itself uh, is um, very mixed use, as you all know, as you go up and down um, the corridor, but this particular area has been primarily residential. There is one structure here, um, actually this parking lot. This is grandfathered in. It is currently the um, your baseball or soccer, Little League. Little League. Yeah, baseball. Little League baseball um, office and storage there. It has been a, a real estate office in the past, so there is a commercial use there, but it is still zoned residential. Um, and then you can see here, uh, this across the street was R3, was this light blue, uh, and then a couple years ago it did, it was requested to C1 light commercial, and that was approved, and now the applicant is requesting the same zoning on this as well. Uh, this went to planning and zoning last month, uh, and it did pass via vote five to two. I do believe, um, uh, the council should have been sent uh, the letters that were submitted to PNZ that night, as well as a petition that was emailed to you all as well, um, petition of opposition from the neighbors. So just wanted to make sure you're all aware of that. But planning and zoning did end up passing at five to two. The only thing I will add to Sal's presentation is we talked about, we did, since we received the petition for um, adjacent property owners, we need to verify that uh, that amount to make sure to see if their supermajority of council would be required to go ahead and pass the rezoning. So the only thing we're going to ask for you to hold the public hearing tonight. Yep. 
but then the uh, ordinance, we would request you to table that until the next meeting on May 15th so we can make sure whether or not a supermajority vote is required. Correct. So our code, thank you, Darren, our code states that if um, at least 30% of people, of property owners within 185 feet sign a petition of oppos uh, opposition, um, and then it requires a supermajority. We did receive a petition uh, via email today. Uh, however, um, I have not been able to verify that. I was looking at cross-referencing the names versus the letters we sent out. Um, there are, I think, some people who may own dual properties, so I need to we'll talk about talk that. with Mark about how we count that. So. Okay. Do we want to comment? No, the, no. I'd say we open up the, open up the floor for yeah yeah the public. Okay. Would anyone in the public like to comment on uh, on this rezoning? Steve, if you'll come up, state your name and address, please. <clears throat> My name is Steve Wilmershire. I live at 1318 East Fifth Street, which is right next to the Honey House on 1822. And uh, I'd just like to give my concerns on this being changed back to, to commercial. Uh, and I thought, since I'm the oldest one in the neighborhood, and the neighbor, I've been in that neighborhood for a long time, I'd, I'd uh, voice my opinion. Uh, the area has cha hasn't changed a whole lot. Uh, the house I live in is right next door to this house. It's built by my grandfather in 1928, so it's about 95 years old. It's been in Wilmershire family the whole time. Uh, the area there has uh, changed. I've seen it change when I was a little boy. I had helped around the house and do stuff there and play and everything. And, and then back then when we were kids, a lot of kids played the neighborhood. A lot of kids then. Then it slowed down to where there's a lot more retired people. Then when my grandfather passed away, then I bought it and uh, we sold the next two lots west of that to uh, do two new houses built there. And when I raised my kids there, we had a lot of kids in the neighborhood. Then it kind of tabled off again. Well, in the last five years, we've had a resurgence of kids in this neighborhood now. We've probably got between 5th Street and 6th Street in that two block area there, we've probably got almost 20 kids from little ones up to high schoolers. And they're primarily girls. We only got three boys, so they're really hurting. But <laughs> uh, my question was that when we were here at the zoning board, my question was, uh, my concerns were, uh, how'd they come by the decision since the staff, the city staff didn't want it. We had several residents here that didn't want to do it. And I was a little upset. I had uh, uh, the, the property has been rented out for years and years and years. And then uh, it stopped being rented out about 10, 15 years ago, I guess it was. And we had several owners since then. And it's been a, uh, never, not a lot of it's been done to it. They wanted to do stuff and the garage is about to fall down. It's got metal flapping around and that hasn't been repaired. And But I mean, uh, Several owners have had it. The last I heard, they were going to, from, I don't know how many owners it was, but I talked to one owner, he was going to make a bed and breakfast out of it. So then, so that's kind of where it was. Well, then this last month, after the moratorium we came on, then uh, the, the, how, the it was boarded up, and then I saw there was a application to have a zone commercial, and then I got the letter, you know, the letter, and then we got, uh, I came to the zoning board, and. Uh, I gave my presentation, you'll see I gave a handout there uh, that I wrote up on for that. Uh, there's uh, the one thing that upset me at this is I found out that uh, the opinion of the new owner said that the, nobody, no one should live, have a raise a family on Fifth Street. And uh, I'd just like to correct that. Uh, my grandfather raised a family there. Don Honey, Mr. Honey raised a family. Don Honey, who we all know is a longtime fire chief, he grew up my dad to that property in there for a long time. I raised my family there. They're off. I've raised now I'm raising my grandkids are there. And uh, to say it's not a place to, to raise, I took offense of that. 
we, uh, I've been there, I spent my first one and a half years living upstairs there, then I was gone, and I've been there probably another 40 years. And uh, now we do have a little problem with, in front of the house on Fifth Street, we have the, the people going from the apartments up to the gas stations and back, and I have the little alcohol containers falling in the, in the yard and stuff. And uh, uh, I've had a few issues that I've written, and I, I understand the problem with law enforcement. It's, it's a really tough to deal with that thing. I've been in law enforcement myself. So, but uh, that's kind of on the front, and the kids are all in the back, and we have a valley behind there, and it's full of kids now. And saying it's not a safe place to live, you know, we take long bike rides. I take the kids, we leave there. We go all the way down to South Point, and they will take the trails all the way out to, to the park, the swimming pool and everything, and we come back and we never get on Fifth Street. The kids can take their bikes and go up to BP and get all the junk they want to eat and never get on Fifth Street. Uh, all the buses for schools and stuff come on Sixth Street, and they're all taken care of, you know, they're taken care of there. So uh, I really think, it, you know, it's disingenuous to say it's not a safe place to live. In fact, I think it's, it's probably safer in some respects because my grandson decided one day to do jumping jacks and jungle gyms out of on the deck and broke his wrist, and Penny and I took, it to, took him to the emergency room, which was two minutes away. So it, uh, it's, it's not as safe as we keep an eye on all the kids and all the families in the neighborhood. And, uh, but, so that's my feeling on that. The other thing is, it's the only mean, they never really got a, I never really got a good reason why they wanted to do it, uh, to change the piano, but you know, it's not a commercial zone anymore down there on, the, on East Fifth Street. You know, my grandfather and my dad, you probably know, we had a business on Main and Elm Street for 40 some years down there. And that was commercial then. Well then we all, it all moved south. Highway 100 uh, moved uh, south. So, uh, and you know, we're talking about the traffic, you know, not being able to raise any. Well, when we raised my kid and stuff back then, that was Highway 100. So the traffic was a whole lot more than it was now. But uh, there's a lot of commercial areas on Fifth Street yet that are just sitting aband abandoned. You know, I, I have concerns, you know, you got, if you go across Fifth Street, I just went a little bit, you got R and Pave TV out there, and you come back, you got Mrs. Gaber's house, or by, by Hardy's is for sale, and that's a brick house, it's got parking lots. And you go down around the turn, Stumpy's, Mrs. Stumpy's property is still there for sale. And uh, there's right next to, on Penn Street, the other th is a commercial property there that can be used. And down further, we got packages that are op it, it's open now, it can be used, got a parking lot. And then we have uh, the business next to Pizza Hut. It didn't last very long, but now you got that, that building there. It, it's not being used. Steve, and, uh, I'm sorry. Can I ask you to wrap it up in a few uh, more? Can I ask okay. you to wrap it up in a few yeah, more yeah, sentences? Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. uh, the, my concerns are you have to wrap it up. My concerns are they want to build a, a uh, maybe a, high, a, a office or parking lot there or something like that. And uh, my concerns are and nothing against the owners that are going to do, do it. Well, my concerns is what's going to happen a few years from now. Is that going to be another vacant spot? And when you open up to commercial, it'll be open just about anybody. And I'll be the one to be directly affected of it. And uh, you know, Mr. Hine was a good a good neighbor. And if there's a parking lot on there, the other thing I I have a uh, problem with is going to be the safety and alley for those kids, because there's going to be more traffic there getting that parking lot. You know, I don't know a lot about the real estate and stuff, but I spent 24 years working commercial vehicle enforcement on. St. Louis County, so I know traffic will it'll be they'll be taking going through there. So uh, those are my main concerns, and uh, I guess the last thing I did I know my neighbor sent a, um, a Melinda a new neighbor sent some concerns if they pass it some qualifications and I agree you know some of them didn't sound that bad but my problem with that is are they enforceable to the owners now or would they be enforceable to somebody else that had it down the road. You know, so I, you know, the neighborhood has all been residential forever, and uh, I don't, 
you know, if uh, we're going to, to me, it's just not respecting the integrity of the, of the neighborhood. It's been one of those, Mr. Hani's house was probably the first one, the other on the other corner, and my house was the third one. And I'd like to see it. I don't, I don't see the need to make it commercial. So that's all I have. Thank, Thank you, you, Steve. <clears throat> My name is Kim Obermark, and I am a realtor with Berkshire Hathaway. Uh, the lot that they are speaking of, I sold the lot across the street, um, and my clients, I believe, still have an intention of putting a snow cone shop at one point there. I live at 1418 East, East Street, 1415 East 5th Street. So from that vacant lot, there's two apartment buildings, and there's my house. There is a two-family next door and a Montessori school next door. So when they talk about it only being residential, um, I definitely, I have 10 grandchildren. I would never let them go in the front yard. We always let them go in the back because I can tell you the police spend a lot of time on 1418 East 5th Street at the apartments. So I don't think that it brings, takes away any value to um, where we live or the city. I think it would only add value um, being not just having a boarded up brick house and having um, with all the new businesses coming into town, I think it would be a great location you cannot call East 5th Street all residential because most of it's not. You have the hospital, you have the gas stations, you have all that that's right there. Um, having a commercial building four houses from me does not um, worry me about the value of my home or the value of anybody else's homes that are around there. So I am definitely for the commercial um, being zoned commercial, I think it would benefit our community. Do you have any questions? Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. Hi there. I'm Madeline Slay. Um, I have written a letter with the signatures do you, would you like me to pass around copies of this madeline can you state your address please? uh 320 penn street all right so um i had also written an original letter that steve wilmisher had mentioned um, that stated um, asking for conditions to be placed on this property um, related to the zoning or to be considered prior to granting zoning um, i've since been informed that that's not the case, that's not possible. So I've written this amended letter that I wanted to share with you all today and have attached signatures from the other residents in the area that also um, are in favor of, uh, or that were in favor of the original conditions and opposed the rezoning of the property. <clears throat> so my name is Madeline Slay and I reside at 320 Penn Street located diagonally from 1322 East 5th Street, the property in question. So if you're looking at the map here, it's diagonally across the other side of 5th Street. Um, and I live right next to the Baseball Association as well. Um, I previously spoke at the Planning and Zoning Commission meeting on April 12th and voiced my opposition for the rezoning of this property at that time as well. While I still oppose the rezoning of the property in an effort to compromise with the rezoning request, I wrote to the city council asking that conditions be placed on the property to address the concerns that us in the neighborhood have related to this change. I've since learned that such conditions cannot be placed. Um, I did want to state that the concerns that I have that ultimately influence my decision to oppose the rezoning, uh, the first is safety and security of the property. The current structure has been vacant for some time since before I purchased uh, my home currently. And there have been some safety concerns in the past with individuals breaking out windows and entering the building. The windows have since been blocked and boarded up, but no additional security has been added to the property, at least to my knowledge. The second is property values. Uh, I am concerned about the impact that the rezoning will have on the values of the surrounding residential properties, as this would be the co only commercial property on that block. 
Ideally, I would like to see a quality structure that fits in with the residential feel of the area if the property were to not reta retain its residential zoning status. Increased traffic and parking is also a concern. I'm concerned about the increased traffic that would result from the addition of a commercial business in the area. If able, I would hope that the appropriate off-street parking would be added to help reduce the traffic on this already busy stretch of 5th Street. We know, we know it's busy, we know it's 5th Street, but um, we don't need to add to more of that. I don't really know what the overall intention is for this building. It could be office space, it could be something different in a few years, but hopefully if I'm still here in a few years from now, um, I would hope that there wouldn't be an addition of, of more traffic in this area as well. Um, I have obtained signatures from neighbors and community members that share these concerns and also oppose the rezoning of the 1322 East 5th Street property, which are attached. Uh, thank you for your time, and if you have any further questions, please let me know. I can also validate who some of those signatures are and the property owners in the surrounding block. The majority of them are from 5th Street over, so kind of uh, directly across from my property, and then following up into 3rd Street as well. Um, I have spoken with Steve Wilmisher as well, and he did mention that he did not sign this as well, but I do know that he is in favor of, of uh, the opposition, obviously. Are there any questions for me? Madeline, you live catty corner of this property? That's yes. Okay. So I live, right. yeah, directly across, yeah, right there. Okay. Um, next to that baseball association. So I purchased my home at the end of 21 and moved in February of 22. Um, I purchased my home because it was very affordable. Obviously living on Fifth Street isn't ideal for a young person, a young single person that's wanting to start a family and wants to be in the Washington area. But like I said, I purchased my home because it was affordable and it was within my means and because you know it's closer to downtown and it's closer to my job and things of that nature. I didn't purchase my home because it was surrounded by commercial properties. I understand that I wasn't living there and I don't have a say in what the vacant lot is zoned at, but I still wanted to at least voice my concerns as a current resident and as a younger person that plans on staying in the Washington area for a considerable amount of time. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Slay, I wanted to ask you this at the planning and zoning meeting, yeah. as I set in for the mayor. Um, I guess when I first read through this, I envisioned this, for lack of better terms, eyesore that it is now, mm -hmm. to be something nicer and better, and it would actually be a positive for your neighborhood. I heard from Mr. Wilmashear back at planning and zoning in tonight yourself. Um, is there is it really? Are you guys really against that? That I, again, I think it would be an. an it would be an attraction to the neighborhood if it was a small parking lot, a dentist office that would be, you know, you're not going to notice a difference of cars on Fish Street. The cars are going to pull into this, you know, the 10 or 15 cars a day or whatever it may be. Um, so I guess I just, I picture the, the house next to the parking lot down here that was dilapidated and then we almost tore it down and then we fix it up and it's, it's, it's been a great asset for us, you know, as an apartment complex or a, a office complex. And I, I guess I envisioned the same thing here. Boarded windows, you know, the block building. No one's lived there as long as I can remember when I drove by there as a kid, you know. Um, thought it would be better. So, but the neighbors, I mean, I know you can't speak for all the neighbors, but yourself personally, wouldn't you want to see it be a historic building kind of revamped and used for something? Yeah, most definitely. But the concern is that, um, at least from the neighbors that I've spoken with, the ones that directly reside across Penn Street from me, the ones that are up and share the alley with them, the ones next to them, the ones next to my across the street neighbors on, on Fifth Street there, I think the overall concern is that there are a lot of unknowns related to what the impact <coughs> on the property will be. Like, we don't know for sure. I'm not familiar with um, with Cowboy and what he plans to do with this property. So I think that there are a lot of unknowns here. I've heard some things about an office building and in reality that is a lot less offensive than you know a fast food place, but there's still unknowns related to um, what the property could be, at least in my opinion, and from the surrounding neighbors. They're, they weren't really aware of anything. They just knew that they weren't in favor of it because they don't wanna live by a commercial building. And that's why I made mention in here and in the conditions that I proposed in my, in my original letter, which I can forward to you if you would like. Um, I actually, Councilman Baer forwarded your email Perfect. to me today, so I was able to yeah, read no, that. Yeah, no, and it's in, it's in the spirit of compromise, because while I would like to see the building restored and, you know, just put back up to its original integrity, there's a lot of unknowns and a lot of concerns, especially the fact that the current building has been owned for a number of years and has been in a state of disrepair, and there have been security concerns, and I want to make sure that the properties that are 
adjacent from my own property that I've spent considerable time and funds trying to improve the state. My house wasn't livable when I first purchased the property. I had to make all of the repairs to get it to that point, and I want to make sure that my investment is secured and that the quality of the buildings surrounding my property maintain that same integrity, and I'm not seeing that with the current building. And I could be very wrong. Uh, that's just why I want to, to voice the concerns, and those I feel are very similar concerns to what my neighbors have. So if there's a way that we can kind of be I don't know, I don't, I don't want to speak for everybody, but I know at least in my mind if there's a way to validate that the concerns will be met and that the concerns will be addressed and that the integrity of the property that is surrounding my own will be you know, kept up to a higher standard than what it currently is, I think that that would be very helpful in not having this reservation. Because I know that change can be scary and I feel like that that can be a component of what I'm feeling is the fear of change, but when reality is facing me every day and it looks like a dilapidated building, it's really a cause for concern of, oh great, what's gonna come from this? Is this gonna be a multi-story facility that's going to be an eyesore? Is this something that's going to potentially negatively impact the resale value of my property? Because I don't know of many people that would like to live surrounded by commercial properties and I'm gonna be surrounded on multiple corners there. So I think that at least having the ability to voice these concerns so that they are considered by the greater, the greater public here um, is at least beneficial for me to at least get some peace of mind that they will be heard and that potentially addressed by the property owner. Thank you. I, uh, some of your conditions are, you know, I, I guess your compromises. I, I read today and I can appreciate that. Sal, I asked before the meeting and just, we can't include those compromises in a zoning change. It's either a zoning, either it's changed or it's not. So, um, Sal, is there any, um, what are the limitations of when we do, if, if we would change it to, to commercial, I mean, it's not gonna be a, I mean, it's not gonna be a gas station, they have to get special use permit for that, those kind of things. So it's limited by lot size and stuff like that there, right? Yeah, so um, <clears throat> it is C1, which is our light commercial. So there are more intensive commercial uses that cannot go there. Gas station is a good example. Um, when it comes to like anything with a drive-through, they would special use permit because they'd have to be able to show the parking lot. Um, the amount of uses, I mean, I can't read them off just because there's a right. ton in each, but I think the best, what we try to do for every commercial or what we have to, what we have to do per code is um, during site review, make sure that they would um, have, you know, landscape buffers between the residential side, that kind of thing. Um, hard surface parking, you know. Required that's, number of spaces. Yeah, you're right. So there are, the there's a review process that we, you know, we do for all commercial structures. So. And I'm just trying to lighten the situation where it's not, I just, I don't envision it to be harsh against your neighborhood. I think a nice apartment, I mean, uh, office building there would actually be an enhancement to the neighborhood. So that's why I just, again, appreciate your compromises. I know it doesn't work out that way, but that's, uh, something that you know we take into consideration. Yeah, so, no, and I must you. definitely just appreciate the time to be able to voice those concerns, especially with speaking with people on the block that obviously aren't here tonight. Um, I felt like it was also a disservice to not go and at least share the concerns that I know that the majority of us have shared and that had, um, uh, had shown support for when I was talking to the neighbors in the area. So that's why I wanted to at least still bring it, bring, um, bring the concerns to light even though the conditions and things like that can't can't be enforced or met or applied in this sort of situation. Perfect. Anything else? Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Find my guy. <laughs> Hi, I'm Angie Holmes real estate broker and Cowboys uh, property manager. I've got some visuals I'm gonna hand out. Here, I'll take two over there. We'll share. We'll share. We'll share. <coughs> Tattoo place. Okay. <laughs> and would you say your address for the record? Sorry. 
sorry. Your address for the record. Uh, 113 Skyview, Labadee, Missouri, 63055. Um, I'd like to start just by, of course, most of you weren't here last month, but one of the gentlemen asked us what year this building was built. And we were like, oh, I don't know, you know? And, and, and I felt really bad for not knowing. And everybody's probably like, how do you not know? You own a building. How do you not know when it was built? To give you an idea, he paid property taxes for 36 tax IDs to Franklin County last year, <laughs> most of which have properties. There's just not enough room up there to remember all the year that all of these buildings were built. So it's not that this building doesn't mean anything to us, and oh, so we don't need to know. We know it's old. It's really old, and we really like to preserve old buildings. And so some of those examples were passed around. Um, one of the most uh, notorious, I guess, would, is at Fifth and High. It was known as being the Washington Tattoo Collective. Before that, it was the? Hi-Fi Tavern. So you can see the before and the after uh, pictures there. That's the quality work that Cowboy does, and I don't think that the quality work that he does is in question here. But um, as uh, Jeff said, you know, Right now it's a boarded up building, and we don't like that. And I think that anybody knows us knows that we don't like that. Um, we try to preserve the historical value in all of the older buildings that he owns. Um, 830 West 5th, the before and after that you have right there is one example. 9 West 3rd is one of those pictures. 806th Street, um, the historic John B. Bush Brewery, of course, just to name a few, and then 117 Front Street in Labadee, which is the building to the left of the Hawthorne, if you've ever been there. Um, as a real estate broker and his property manager, it's my job to determine the highest and best use for his properties. So unfortunately, not everyone agrees with those uses all the time, which is why we're here tonight, a little job security for you all, I guess, such as it is. Um, but it is always our goal to be a good neighbor, and to, be a, uh, to obey the law, and follow the rules and regulations, which again is why we're here tonight, and the code set forth by the city of Washington. But I like to think that we go way beyond that by bringing properties up to a higher standard with quality workmanship, preserving the historical value in the properties when it applies, and maintaining all the properties by keeping the lawns mowed and the buildings in good repair. So this building is mowed weekly. It's boarded up because we had a little overzealous employee. I told him to go board up the basement window that was knocked out so that critters wouldn't come in there and, and take up residence. Well, he took that as, we're gonna board the whole thing up. <laughs> and maybe he saw other broken windows in there and, and thought, we'll secure the building. He's ex-army, gotta secure the post, right? Um, not ideal, believe me, I don't like it as just as much as the neighbors don't like it. We're in the process of getting that Fixed. I've already met with a, um, our window guy to get some pricing for some new windows. Windows is probably the last thing that needs to be done. If you look at the pictures of the interior of this building, you'll see that there's no plumbing. It has uh, the uh, uh, knob and tube wiring still. The whole septic system needs to be, you know, uh, dug up and redone. It, it's going to take a lot of work. It's a two-room building with a loft that at the moment has no bathroom and no kitchen. It sits on Fifth Street, which, as the previous lady said, it's a busy street. It's going to be busy whether this is commercial or if it's residential. If it's residential, I could move my... 10 family members in there maybe, and all of us drive. There's 10 more cars. Um, but there is room, it's on a double lot, so there's room to add a parking lot, which would alleviate any parking on uh, 5th Street or on Penn Street. Uh, there's be room for a play yard if it were become a, a daycare. Um, But to be clear, this was never going to be a nightly rental. 
little touchy subject these days. So the zoning property commercial has historically raised the value of neighboring properties if done correctly. You can ask Herb, who lives behind the uh, Fifth and High uh, property there that you have the before and after pictures for. He also gardens part of it because we're his, he, we're his neighbor and we're neighborly. So he uh, does a garden on part of the property that, that Cowboy owns. So we do consider the neighboring concerns and what we would want for neighboring property as if we were to live there. Um, we're part of this town and we want to be, be good neighbors to, our, uh, to the neighboring properties. So we would not put a business there that would interfere with their quality life, such as a bar or another touchy subject, a homeless shelter. Um, but it's in our, our goal and it's in our best um, interest to increase the surrounding property values by increasing the value of this property. He's proven his quality of work. Um, the, the building almost doesn't conform already just because everything around it is newer, so it kind of sticks out as a, a historical building, or at least it appears to be older than everything else, I don't know. Um, but the amount of money that's needed to get this building up to code, just the bare minimum, um, then up to our standards, and up to a workable or a livable status will be staggering. So because we're in the rental business, this is what we do, uh, the ability to recoup that investment as a one bedroom, one bath, single fam family home just isn't feasible. So in the end, it's my opinion that the highest and best use for 1322 East Beth is commercial. Any questions? Will you guys keep the structure? Sorry. So what? Will you keep the structure? Yes. Okay. Yep. I have a couple things to add. Uh, my name's Larry Primsey. I live at 113 uh, Skyview Lane, Lavity, Missouri. We, I think everybody knows, I think almost everybody here I know. We own a lot of businesses and properties here in Washington, including the historic John B. Bush Brewery. Uh, we've restored uh, multiple buildings over the years. Um, I think that speaks for itself. I don't really want to rehash all of it, but I think everybody knows and we take a structure and redo it when it's done. It's top notch, first class. You know, we're not slum lords. We don't have any property that fits that realm, nor are we the least bit interested in doing that. I think we've done a lot to raise the property values, not just of our properties, but the ones that are next to it. And several of the buildings, like the one on uh, Sixth Street, Caddy Corner from Crog Park. We probably should have tore the damn thing down because I sure put more money in it what it was worth. But it's a beautiful building. It looks very nice right across from the restrooms there if you got a picture of it. Um, I would like to say a couple of other things. The thing about Fifth Street is if you were just going to take that area and analyze it, it's much more suitable to commercial use than it is to residential. It's kind of a dangerous spot for kids anyway. We're not talking about putting a high use commercial uh, entity in there. As Sal said, it's not, it's not allowed anyway without conditional use permit. We're not asking for that. Um, our intent is to use it in more like what, you know, something along the line of a dentist, a doctor's office, maybe a lawyer's office, something like that, small traffic. Um, one of the things that I thought was important is the lady that has this, I hadn't seen this letter before, but they're worried about the safety and security of the property. Well, so are we, because it's our investment. And with commercial buildings, they tend, because nobody's there at night, generally speaking, they wouldn't be there. Most of them all have security systems. Most of them directly call the police department. You can talk to the policeman here and you'll know that those are the ones that they get the alarms off of. And as far as property values, I think we've adequately addressed that. Everybody knows that commercial has a higher value than residential. And as far as increased traffic and parking, as she said, the traffic's already there on Fifth Street. We ain't going to create it. This isn't going to make a blimp on that radar at all. But we will be able to have our street parking. As Sal said, it's a big double lot there. And I think that this is the best and highest use for it. And we'd like to get started doing something. And when we do, we will apply for a building permit as we have always done, and we will meet all the city standards, and everybody here that's ever worked with me knows that we'll do what we're 
asked to do and what's required by the standards and by the permits and we'll do it right. That's just, that's just what we do. If anybody has any questions. Sorry, another concern I know was uh, the future, which, you know, they don't know what it's gonna be down the road. Well, nobody, nobody knows what anything is gonna be down the road. As long as we're here, and we don't sell property. <laughs> as long as we're here, it will be respectfully done. Questions? Questions, guys? Surely you got a question, Jeff. No, sir. I'm quiet tonight. You're going to let me off easy? Okay. Anybody? <clears throat> Thank you all for your time. I appreciate it. Anyone else on this issue? We don't need anything, do we? Nope, I think you just accept the uh, letter into the minutes. So moved. Second. Motion by Patkey, second by Holtmeyer to accept the uh, letter in the minutes. All those in favor, say aye. 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 It's accepted. Okay. As we stated earlier, item 3B, we'd like to go ahead and table so that we can go ahead and verify uh, ownership and the signatures that were presented to us. I'll make a motion to table. Second. Motion by Patkey, second by Wessels to table 3B. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. So um, it shouldn't take us, I should, we should be able to do that in the next day or two. So yeah, we'll, we'll be able to get on, it on your next agenda. Yeah, the next agenda which will be May 15th. Correct. So. <clears throat> be a vote, no public hearing that night. Correct, just, Correct. just a vote on the ordinance. Rezoning 309 and 313 Coulter Court. All right, this one um, is a little bit more straightforward. Uh, we actually haven't had uh, one of these rezonings uh, request in a couple years, um, but uh, this property at uh, 309 and 313 Coulter Court, you see is a very traditional duplex here at the, on the north side of the Merriweather uh, State Subdivision. Uh, you can see here, I'll actually, once you get to the top of Coulter Court, all of these um, homes are uh, duplexes. And when that was uh, developed, uh, I believe in the early 2000s, um, at the time we did not have a zoning for duplexes. It was just considered R3 multifamily. Uh, and then the developers at that time would condo them out. Uh, since the 2008 crash and, and, and beyond, uh, a lot of the uh, finance organizations and lenders have not wanted to do condos on these smaller buildings. They'd rather have actually um, individually taxed parcels, which requires them to do a um, subdivision of that. In order to do that, um, in 2012, I believe, the city introduced a new zoning code for R1C single family attached, which is really just a zoning specifically for these duplexes. That orange is actually the R1C single family attached. Most of this neighborhood has already done it. Um, and it, they act, these actually all came in on one application. Uh, for whatever reason at that time, I think it was in 2019, uh, these property owners didn't sign off uh, on that application, <coughs> but now they're wanting to do so. So the rezoning would just allow them to be able to uh, match that R1C single family attached, bring them into conformance, and then when they are ready to sell, they can uh, turn their condo plat into a traditional subdivision plat. And this did go to planning zoning last month as well, passed unanimously. So I, uh, again, explain the advantage of switching this. I'm, I'm not So it, it's really just a change on paper. It's from what we were, because it, it's just a paperwork. So I, we actually called when we were getting a bunch of requests in these at one month at a time. Um, I called one of the lenders in town and they said that they typically do not do uh, condo plats on these anymore. They want an actual tax, taxable parcel. In order to subdivide, it has to be because it's a zero lot line, they have a shared wall. Mark, they, they, it's basically a financing. They, the banks don't want to finance it if there's not a clear lot line that goes through the shared wall, basically is what it boils down yeah. to. You can't sell half a duplex. Okay. We used to do two or three of these constantly a couple of years back. <laughs> yeah. yeah, everyone was doing them at once, yeah. <clears throat> like I said, and, and there was a question raised at that time, it's like, why don't you just do all of the, well, maybe there's some that don't want to do that and they want to keep the zoning that they had. So uh, we didn't mind going ahead and, and uh, introducing this zoning district or whatever to help with these situations. So they can sell the pieces. They can sell, they can sell half, basically they can 
get financing on either half of the one of like, either one of those units. Yep. Okay. Because in the R three we don't allow shared walls, so they couldn't right. they couldn't put a property line down the middle. It has to go to R one C so they can have a shared wall. So it's a lot of paperwork for them to finance. So okay. Thank you. Yep. I'll take a motion. No, so we've got to open up oh, public, public hearing. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Anyone interested in speaking this one? Okay. Um, now I'll make a motion. To I'll accept in the minutes. Okay. Motion by Patkey, second by Briggs to accept into the minutes. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. D, please. An ordinance rezoning 309 and 313 Coulter Court from R3 multifamily to R1C single family attached in the city of Washington, Franklin County, Missouri. Patkey. Introduced by Patkey. Any other questions? Any other questions, you guys? Take a motion then. Nope. Second this is a roll call vote. Okay. Ordinance. You'd think I'd know this. Everybody. An okay. ordinance rezoning 309 and 313 Coulter Court from R3 multifamily to R1C single family attached in the city of Washington, Franklin County, Missouri. Coulter? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Wessels? Aye. Patkey? Yes. Holtmeyer? Aye. Fair? Yes. By your vote, uh, the ordinance passes. Citizens comments? Any citizens comments tonight, folks? Anything not on the agenda? Not on the agenda. Okay. Ordinances and resolutions. An ordinance authorizing and directing the execution of a cooperative agreement for road improvement for a section of South Point Road by and between the city of Washington, Missouri and the Washington Special Road District. Patkey. Introduced by Pat King. As was explained in the uh, workshop that we had previous prior to the uh, council meeting, this is for the second phase of the improvements on South Point Road. Uh, it basically picks up where the first phase uh, left off and continues south to North Good Goods Mill. Uh, you've got exhibits in here that explains what our responsibility is and what the Washington Special, Special Road District's responsibilities will be. Uh, they are going to be uh, bidding the project out as well as uh, doing um, inspections of it, et cetera. We are just there for the clock share on our portion. And we, this still, it's still down the road before this becomes city property all the way. Well, this is not, there, there's not an annexation requ request with right. this. This right. is just simply a cost share that we have because we have, uh, it's vital for us to have the curb and gutter that's out there. That's the reason why we're, we're sharing in the milling costs. But then more importantly, at that intersection that you have at Thoroughbred, South Point Road, and um, uh, I don't know what the Stonecrest Street is that goes in there, but basically that is, uh, all of that is in the city limits. Right. That's why that's highlighted in red, so. <clears throat> Any other discussion? Okay, second reading, Sherry. An ordinance authorizing and directing the execution of a cooperative agreement for road improvement for a section of South Point Road by and between the city of Washington, Missouri and the Washington Special Road District. Coulter? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Wessels? Aye. Patkey? Yes. Holtmeyer? Aye. Fair? Yes. By your vote, Ordinance 7 Alpha passes. B, please. An ordinance amending Chapter 650 of the Code of the City of Washington, Missouri. Patkey? Introduced by Pat Key. All right, and again, as we discussed in the workshop, this is the code amendment that would um, widen the definition of a, uh, from a food truck to a mobile food vendor unit to allow for carts and trailers. No questions? Second read. In ordinance amending chapter 650 of the code of the city of Washington, Missouri. Coulter? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Wessels? Aye. Patkey? Yes. Holtmeyer? Aye. Bayer? Yes. By your vote, Ordinance 7B passes. C, please. An ordinance authorizing and directing the execution of a professional services agreement by and between the City of Washington, Missouri and Civil Design, Inc. Holtmeyer. Introduced by Holtmeyer. All right. And also, again, this is the contract with CDI to design the new intersection at Pottery and uh, Don Avenue for the, uh, this would um, uh, let us finish our responsibilities of the development agreement for the Don Avenue Outer Road. Okay, 
Second reading, Sherry. An ordinance authorizing and directing the execution of a professional services agreement by and between the City of Washington, Missouri and Civil Design, Inc. Coulter? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Wessels? Aye. Patkey? Yes. Holtmeyer? Aye. Bayer? Yes. By your vote, Ordinance 7C passes. D, please. <clears throat> An ordinance accepting the proposal from SCS Engineers for Professional Engineering Services for a soil investigation at the Oldenburg Industrial Park and struck off sanitary landfill and amend the 2023 budget. Hold on. Sorry. Joe was first. You bet. Introduced by Holtmeyer, please. So as we discussed in the workshop, this is the proposal from, um, um, sorry, um, SCS. SCS. SCS, thank you. Uh, to go ahead and not only look at the soil samples that are out there in Oldenburg, to see if we can use that as fill for uh, the sanitary landfill, but also for the closure, for the beginning, the design for the closure of struck off sanitary landfill. So um, staff recommends approval. Cost of the project is 52400 for the contract with SCS for this. No further discussion. I yeah. I don't hate to do this to you, Darren. But no, that's fine. It's not fill, but it's actually cover. Yes. So it's, it, we can use it for cover dirt on top of the land. Correct. Okay. It's not for. We're not trying to fill the landfill in. No. Right. That's all. I was, it's just for. Yeah. I, I apologize if I said. That's all right. It's it's basically to go ahead and sample those soils. We're gonna we'll have some in the Oldenburg Industrial Park, and that, then see if we can go ahead and use those uh, for cover in the landfill. The final covering. Yeah. Go ahead, Sherry, second reading. An ordinance accepting the proposal from SCS Engineers for professional in engineering services for a soil investigation at the Oldenburg Industrial Park and struck off sanitary landfill and amend the 2023 budget. Coulter? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Wessels? Aye. Patkey? Yes. Holtmeyer? Aye. Bayer? Yes. Okay, by your vote, uh, 7D passes. 7E, please. An ordinance amending the 2023 budget of the city of Washington, Missouri. As Pat Wayne stated at the workshop, go ahead. Pat Key. Introduced As Wayne by stated Pat. at the workshop, it's just, this is just formality to keep the auditors happy. We did not show that we were amending the budget for that increase that you already approved of at the last meeting with Midwest Pool. Okay. Go ahead, Sherry. So. An ordinance amending the 2023 budget of the city of Washington, Missouri. Coulter? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Wessels? Aye. Patkey? Yes. Holtmeyer? Aye. Bayer? Yes. By your vote, 7E passes. 7F, please. An ordinance amending section 370.190 of the Code of the City of Washington, Missouri. Patkey? Introduced by Patkey. As we stated in the workshop, again, um, Steve gave you the information with regards to this is just going to go ahead and make this uniform with the helmet laws that are in Missouri so that there's not any confusion over uh, implementation or writing tickets here in town that, that uh, would um, uh, not meet what the, what the state code is, basically. Okay. Go ahead, second reading, please. An ordinance amending section 370.190 of the Code of the City of Washington, Missouri. Coulter? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Wessels? No. Patkey? Yes. Holtmeyer? Aye. Bayer? Yes. By your vote, uh, Ordinance 7F passes. Chief, please. An ordinance authorizing and directing the City of Washington, Missouri to enter into a sales contract with Hoffman Hillerman Nursery Florist for the purchase of an Xmark Laser E Series 60 0 turn mower. Patkey. <laughs> Introduced by Patkey. Good evening, Council. As we spoke in the uh, workshop, this is a replacement of our 2016 zero turn mower we currently have. We're recommending the X mark from Hillerman's. Any further questions, guys? Okay. Go ahead, Sherry, second reading, please. An ordinance authorizing and directing the City of Washington, Missouri to enter into a sales contract with Hoffman Hillerman Nursery Florist for the purchase of a X mark Laser E Series 60, 60 zero turn mower. Coulter? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Wessels? Aye. Patkey? Yes. Holtmeyer? Aye. Bayer? Yes. By your vote, 7G passes. Commission, committee, and board reports an ordinance approving the amendment to the final plat of the Terrace in Washington, Plat 1, 
in the city of Washington, Franklin County, Missouri. Patkey. Introduced by Patkey. All right, yes, thank you. So this is an amendment to the Washington Terrace Plat 1, um, where the uh, apartments are going in uh, just west of Casey's. Um, there's actually two things on here. One that says Tobin Way, that will actually be the right of way for Don Avenue, because this will connect and go through. But as the new buyer was doing their due diligence, they realized um, there was this small triangle here that didn't have right of way going all the way to Highway 100, and this is actually on a different property owner uh, from the Washington Terrace, and so this Platt Amendment dedicates the right of way um, back over and includes it into KJ Unterstall Drive, and then it also includes the escrow. Um, there's a performance bond attached to this ordinance for the escrow for the construction of KJ Unterstall Drive because that will be done by a different developer than the apartment for Don Avenue. So that was that amendment there. So. so that little triangle got left out of the... Yeah, and you know what I think happened, honestly, is that this property line, that's actually how it was before, previously. And so when this was drawn by the Washington Terrace, it went to the edge of their property that they bought from Kurt, or from, from Jasper Farms, the LLC yeah. there. And this was just left out, so. But right away dedication, so. And we do have the exhibit for that that they can take over to the county, the legal description. So it's just an easement for the road, not transfer of property or anything? It's, it's a right away dedication. Right away dedication. Okay. Yep. A little big thing. Yeah. Yep. How yeah. much there? No, it's just. Other questions or discussion, guys? Second reading. An ordinance approving the amendment to the final plat of the Terrace in Washington, Plat 1, in the city of Washington, Franklin County, Missouri. Coulter? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Wessels? Aye. Patkey? Yes. Holtmeyer? Aye. There. Yes. By your vote, 8A passes. B, please. An ordinance approving the final plat of Highland Meadows, Plat 8, in the city of Washington, Franklin County, Missouri. Patkey. Introduced by Patkey. All right, and again, uh, about a month ago, um, I think it was um, in March, um, uh, we actually looked at the Highland Meadows Plat 8, and we did bring this to you all as a preliminary plat. Again, this is in that area, uh, the same uh, location. Uh, they now have a buyer for Lot 9, and so um, with that, they have to extend Don Avenue just from here to here, and that requires a plat amendment to actually have that be recorded uh, in this location. And so that is what they're asking for tonight for the final plat to create lot nine and then extend that right away. Um, and then there is also a performance bond for about 16,000 for that stretch. In there, so. We're gonna do this 100 times, we do 50 feet at a time, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know, but I, I, it is helpful that we have a development agreement for this portion. Right, so that'll all be at once. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna be honest, what I think is happening is that it, there may be, cause this does need to shift down, as you can see, to line up here, and this may be a larger lot. So he, the reason they don't wanna plat this straight across yet is that they don't know how big this northern lot will be. Is it, it's not advantageous to allow it not to be hard surface now, not knowing what's gonna go in the future, or is it better to have it done well, for, this portion, for lot size? For this portion, because this buyer knows that's exactly what they're doing, so their access will be to that point, so. Oh, their access into the lot will be there, so it yeah. has to be hard, okay. Yep. Right. All right. New coffee shop, another one. Other questions, discussion, <laughs> second reading. An ordinance approving the final plat of Highland Meadows, Plat 8, in the city of Washington, Franklin County, Missouri. Coulter? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Wessels? Aye. Patkey? Yes. Holtmeyer? Aye. Fair? Yes. By your vote, Ordinance uh, 8B passes. Mayor's report? Um, I'd like to remind the council about uh, in June. Juneteenth is a federal holiday. So... Local um, holiday too. Local holiday also, so we will not be here. And the meeting, uh, council meeting has been moved to the 20th. So 
from a Monday to a Tuesday. Oh, that's what I did yesterday. Damn. Also, um, Carolyn Witt talked about uh, the centennial celebration this, uh, this Thursday. I hope everybody can attend. Everyone starts at 10 o'clock. Uh, Probably 30 minutes worth of ceremony. Lots of kids there. The Warston Band, Brass Band will be here. Um, tours the City Hall. Yeah, tours the City Hall. So, should be fun. And everybody's invited, of course. Everybody. And uh, one last thank you for the uh, job well done for the police department, Steve. Please convey that to all the officers from not just me, but the entire council and our citizens, too. Gosh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd like to bid them for from all of us, no doubt. That was a yeah. and appreciate Darren keeping us in the loop. I mean, with the communication on Friday, that's that's nice. Um, I'm an hour and a half away and see the pictures and um, you know you're concerned about people who are at stake, people from neighboring apartments for taking pictures. You know they can't get out, things like that. It was a worried period, but uh, handled professionally and. No one was injured in the end. So uh, again, accommodation to all the officers. Thanks. That's all I have. Go ahead. City Administrator's Report. I just want to go ahead and two things. Uh, we do have our interview committee on our search for a public works director. We'll meet tomorrow afternoon at 4 o'clock. Uh, we do have some uh, applications that uh, uh, we need to discuss and consider. So that's good. Um, and then the second thing is there is a solid waste committee uh, that will meet on June the 9th at 4 o'clock and two items will, that will be discussed are fees for the recycling center. Uh, I'm sorry, what did I say? I, I apologize, you're right. Apologize, I had it written wrong. May 9th, next Tuesday. Uh, where the fees for uh, stumps and stuff that we take in at the recycling center um, we'll have some information for those. I think Jeff, you're on that. Not no, anymore. Not anymore. Well, I apologize. I remember. Mark. Solid waste is uh, Mike Coulter, Mark Wessels. There you go. Okay. So we'll have you information with regards to, um, like I said, how we operate the um, recycling center and the fees that we receive and our expenses that we have out there. But also we'll give you a preliminary review of the rates for this for the. Uh, uh, landfill. Um, that'll be the first time Andrea will get some rates together and for the committee to go ahead and consider. And the goal is eventually for that committee to make a recommendation to the city council that we can present at a later date, preferably within a month or two. Being that I'm not on solid waste anymore, but I was an hour and a half ago, um, <laughs> please consider having out of town people pay a different amount than in town people, if at all possible. Definitely. I think our in-town people deserve to be able to bring their leaves and sticks and et cetera. Big stumps is another thing, but I think we have a, a, a large concern of people who are out of town that use our facilities for free that probably need to be charged for. So I agree. You talking about the, the recycling? Recycling center, yeah. yes. Okay. I mean, the, the, <clears throat> the landfill tipping fees just need to be raised. There's no doubt right. about that, whether that's in or out. But the recycle center, I think we definitely need to have a difference between residents how that is city sticker like the old days or whatever I don't know but I won't be in the meeting so I'll leave it up to you to make that right choice the challenge the challenge will be is coming up and how do you deal with how do you deal with the expense of staffing to see who's bringing the, the stuff in yeah. and in the past I think it was it was just city just took it as a wash to even took a little bit like I said we'd operate a little bit in the red as a service and I agree that we we do have certainly a, a uh, a lot of people from outside the city of Washington, especially that use the recycling containers down, like I said, we subsidize for that for, for the, the area, so to speak. Right. Because our residents have it at curbside. Uh, but as far as like... Uh, especially those who don't want to annex into the city and then they use our recy recycling. It's, right, yes. exactly. And then you also have, just with regards to the... Uh, loads. Well, the landfill I was going to get back to is like for those loads that are, that are less or whatever, just, you know... We'll, we'll bring it up to the committee, but remember when we had the discussion at this level is that, you know, since we have two large trash items a month now, our residents have that where they don't have to go ahead and take that mattress out there. If they can wait a month, that's all we ask. They, they still can call up Waste Connections if they want to and have it picked up earlier if they don't right. want to look at it at the curb for 
three weeks or whatever the case may be. But um, but those are things we'll bring up at the at the meeting and eventually get a recommendation back here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Council comments. Yeah, I'd like to um, thank Josh from the Parks Department. He uh, did a wonderful job on Arbor Day when they planted some trees up in the churchyard. Uh, that that uh, he did a wonderful job with the kids in explaining what how, what how to plant a tree, and they did plant it. And so, I Great. just want to say kudos to the Parks Department again for doing a nice job. They had a good turnout, also at the yeah. farmers market. That group they had down there. Mm -hmm. yep. And we're lucky as a city, you guys, to have a certified arborist. Mm -hmm. He does a great job. Uh, from my standpoint, I had a few phone calls and a couple of emails. I already talked to Chief Armstrong, and he's passed it on for traffic committee, which is, I think it even this came. More. This oh, Friday. Oh, you're off now. This Friday. Um, Washington High School, new ball fields are creating a parking issue down there on the corner especially is where a lot of the rub comes in I know we've seen a, yeah. a few not so great altercations down there too but uh, that'll come up Friday I just mm -hmm. think we need to look by the time we get anything put in place ball season's probably gonna be over but uh, we need to be thinking about that there's there's just not enough parking down there and, yeah. and I don't know what the answer is either. <clears throat> I was at that one game there it's it's hard and I think you know, at least on the corner, we've got to get some no parking up there because it's down to one lane when you go through there. And one of the citizens sent some really good photos that I forwarded on. So you'll have that to discuss. And I already don't know who got put on that tonight. So does the city own that uh, <clears throat> land where those houses were that uh, were raised? We do. After the flood? We do. Uh, what we have to be uh, mindful of is that there are restrictions that were placed because we received federal assistance to go ahead and purchase those properties at the time and there was uh, uh, restrictions placed on there about hard surfacing and creating more runoff. More runoff sure. I, so, sure. uh, but there are some solutions that you could do down there. I, like I said, we can, we can talk about that. Other comments, guys? Yeah, just to add to that, I know it was on the social media and when there's a baseball and softball game at the same time, well, that doesn't happen. I mean, that's two different seasons, et cetera. But there's no doubt there just wasn't enough parking spots put in there for that kind of complex. As we were there Friday night with both local high schools there, it, it's one of those situations where it's so neat to see that many people in town. Um, it was neat to be a part of it. My son got to play in it. Um, that Borgia plays Washington, and it's, it, it, was a, it was a very neat experience. Um, a lot because the kids play Legion baseball together and all that kind of stuff. So win or lose, they're taking pictures afterwards and all that. It was just so disappointing to hear the, the things on social media that we had to have altercations in the parking lot or on the street, I guess I should say. So um, like Councilman Bear said, it's really just the curve up on the top all the way on the right-hand side of the picture there. Whenever you put cars on both sides, it becomes a one-lane road to go through. So as traffic looks at that, you know, just – Again, we don't have to revamp the whole thing, but the school district also needs to be on the hook for having more parking there. Not just that's a city problem, but what the requirements are from a well, and school I, district. We even point. talked about this at one of the traffic committee meetings that I made it to, just to listen in on, there was some talk about, are we gonna have to do something there? And I think it's pretty evident we do. So something to talk about Friday. Beautiful complex. They did a really nice job. It's just a matter of the parking needs to have some help. So we'll work with them. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. No need for an executive session. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Well, that's fast. <laughs> You're quick. Motion by Badke, second by Bear. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. About that.